Hello, if you are traveling from Zimbabwe going to the United Kingdom as a healthcare worker and it's your first time, in this video we're going to be looking at some of the important things that you need to know when you're traveling for the very first time. However, I'm not going to cover everything in this video. I also want your feedback if you are a frequent traveler and you want to give advice to someone who's traveling for the first time, what sort of information are you going to tell them? It's what I'm actually going to cover in this video. So think about it. Let's say you're sitting on a coffee table with me and you're asking me what sort of stuff should I prepare for my journey. So let's uh, get into it. So uh, I want you to double check if you're subscribed to my channel. If not, please smash that subscribe button and give a like or leave a comment or share this video. Whatever you can do uh, when you do that, this video is going to help a lot more people. So let's just look in when you are first traveling. A lot of things comes into your mind like what to carry, uh, what sort of experience am I going to expect when I'm actually um, on, the, on, my, on traveling and things like that. So the first thing that you want to think of is um, buying your ticket. A lot of people when they're buying their air tickets, they always want to look for a cheaper option when they're buying their tickets. I recommend that if you are buying your ticket for the very first time, make sure that you use a travel agent to do that on your behalf. Let me tell you a story. There are flights that are cheap, there are flights that are expensive, there are flights that are, flights that are uh, a little bit uh, on average. And depending on the time at which you're traveling, fl flights, they uh, fluctuate in prices. You, may tr you might travel in a high season when flights are really expensive. So the reason why you need to use a travel agent when traveling, because you need to make sure that you get on the right flight and you get uh, on the, um, um, a, a safer trip. A very good example that I can give you, I have a friend of mine who was traveling for the very first time to the United Kingdom. And uh, this friend of mine wanted to buy a cheap flight. So when you're booking a flight, there are flights that can take you to United Kingdom like in 15 hours and like 18 hours. And there are flights that can take you to United Kingdom in like 55 hours. So in that case, a lot of those flights that take more hours, it means they've got a lot of stops. That means you can fly from uh, Zimbabwe to South Africa. You wait for three hours, you fly from South Africa to uh, uh, um, Amsterdam, you wait for eight hours you fly to another country wait for uh, other hours for your next connecting flight to come through if you have a lot of stops within your flight then you are likely to be in trouble just like how my friend got in trouble because in one of the countries that she went to he wanted a transit visa which did not end up very well so if you're doing this for the first very, very first time use an agent don't look at the price that they have charged you just use an agent for your trip so with that said we are done for the tickets and then number two the f other thing that you need to take note of is picking your bags you need to check on your ticket how many bags are allowed to for you to carry when you're actually traveling a lot of people they want to carry anything and everything voila and then they go to a <laughs> kingdom one thing that you need to understand that every person who is traveling they allocated some certain cages that they are allowed to carry so make sure that you do check on your ticket. This information is indicated on your ticket. And if you have no idea, go ahead and consult with your uh, travel agent that is actually uh, booked the ticket for you. In some cases, it's uh, two bags and one handbag and uh, yeah, so something like that. And they are specified cages. If you're like me, you live in Zimbabwe. And um, I recommend that. So each bag is actually uh, some allocations to say, this first bag has to have like 23 kgs, the other bag has to have 23 kgs, and the other bag has to have this number of kgs. You can check that information on your ticket. And what you do before you get to the airport, okay, when you get to the airport, you're going to see that there's a lot of people that are weighing their bags and putting plastic wraps and things like that. What you do, however, I do go to people that sell uh, gas in, in Zimbabwe, okay. We know that a lot of people sell gas, and those people, they've got weighing um scale they put scale so what i go there i say i want to pay you a dollar i just want to weigh my bags before i get to the airport so that i can actually check if my my luggage is fine so when you do that you avoid a situation whereby when you get to the airport when everyone at the airport sometimes it can be busy you avoid trying to take your bags to the scale again to make sure that they um uh uh, they find out how many cages and you avoid a lot of trouble when you do that so i do pay someone two dollars three dollars and then i pick my bags before i get to the airport using a place where they sell gas okay 
I know some of you don't have these scales at home. If you do have a scale at home, just use that scale at home and then pick your things nicely uh, while you're at home. Looking at what you carry, a lot of people, they do carry a lot of things depending on your travel. But in this case, you're coming to the United Kingdom as a health healthcare worker. I recommend that you don't carry a lot of clothes, especially to like this. The reason why I say you don't carry a lot of clothes is because when you get to the United Kingdom, you're going to realize that there is a lot of shops that do sell clothes and the clothes are quite affordable at the same time uh, there is a lot of shops around the uk that they call charity shops now think of charity shops as mabero in zimbabwe okay so you walk into that shop you're going to find affordable clothes that can uh, you can actually uh, take up also think about the time at which you're traveling if you're traveling in summer or winter just you know the kind of clothes that you need to carry okay talking of carrying things there are some instances whereby you're going to, if someone knows that you're traveling to UK, there are some people that are going to ask you to carry this and that. I want you to be very mindful of what you carry, okay? Make sure that you are carrying something from a trusted person or find out what is in the baggage. Because at the, for your first, first time traveling, you don't want to be bugged at the airport with um, questions and anything in between. Again, Talking of carrying stuff, my other experience that I actually had at one airport, I was actually on the airport, I was like here through that time and I met this other lady and they showed like, you know what, um, I've got this person who's traveling for the very first time and they're traveling for the very first time and um, they've got a lot of bags, can you please hold this bag on their behalf and something like that. So that was the kind of conversation that I was actually having. This was me before I go through the security checkpoint and I have to, you know, so someone wanted me to carry their bag. So you may come across such situations. Never ask anyone to give you something to hold on their behalf because you don't even know what's on the bag, okay? You don't even know what's on the bag. So please don't carry anyone, stranger stuff on the airport. Okay, now go back to our story. We are still picking our bags and let us look at um, your travel preparations. Number one, you need to make sure that you do have your passport and your passport should have um, the visa for you to uh, allow you to travel. And then number two, you need to make sure that you follow the protocols of COVID tests. Okay, find out what's happening. What I recommend people do who are traveling for the very first time. I know that I had a conversation with someone and I actually encourage them to do the um, the COVID test. A lot of people, they do debate, okay, I do have a COVID card. Do I need a COVID test? So if you're traveling for the first time, you just need to avoid anything that comes your way. Getting a COVID test done in Zimbabwe is like 20 bucks. Go ahead and do that process and have those two things, your card and your test. Okay, so uh, when you do that, you avoid the hassle of getting to airport and then maybe one of those things is actually asked and you're trying to figure out what do I do here. So just make sure that you are ready to produce anything in like a split of a second. <laughs> okay, so that's my, uh, my, my comment on that. Still on preparation, you need to make sure that you have your things done in time. A lot of people and a lot of logistics in Zimbabwe uh, they can be disappointed by uh, time because uh, sometimes it may be something that is out of your control but we're looking at think about traffic think about mshika shika when you get on mshika shika and then some of these guys they take you to point a point b point x point x y z and things like that make sure that when you are supposed to be at the airport let's say 8 a.m make sure that you are there at least three hours before three hours before the flight leaves. It's very important that you um, get there on time, no matter what cost. I know that a lot of you have got friends that you want to say goodbye to and uh, and in between that you say, ah, if I don't say bye to this person, uh, then it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna feel, I'm gonna feel guilty. I had that experience actually when a friend of mine was actually traveling uh, and someone was supposed to come and see them to say bye. I had to tell them, my friend, that we are late. We have to leave this place. So we, we love these people, but they have to make sure that if they are going to say bye to us, they have to honor our appointments. If you have ever, ever missed any appointment, uh, it's fine. But when you're going on a flight, in most cases, um, when you have your flight canceled, definitely you're going to be, um, you're going to be in trouble. So now, Thinking of the day that you're actually traveling, I know that day when you're actually traveling for the first time, you know that, okay, this is my last day in Zimbabwe, you have a sleepless night. 
So try and have a rest and make sure that all your preparations are done before that day. And on, on the day of traveling, you're just doing nothing else but carrying your bag and straight to the airport. Now, looking at the transport logistics again, still on that point, you may not necessarily need to book a taxi to take you there, but do ask a friend or a relative that you can just pay them to put fuel in your car so that they can take you to the they can take you to the airport uh, and then they make your journey much 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 easier. Now, I'm just closing my eyes right now and imagining myself getting on the um, uh, Harare International Airport in Zimbabwe, that is Robert Mugabe International Airport, yes. Uh, and then the moment that you drop off, if you're carrying a lot of brakes, go ahead and take um, a trolley where you can actually put your, your bags. Remember, we've actually weighed our bags already. And, and put your bags on a trolley. Don't carry a lot of um, a lot of stuff bags on yourself. There are trolleys that you can actually use. And at the same time as you go, there is a departure point where a lot of people say goodbye to one another and take a lot of pictures make sure that you're there on the airport on time like i said earlier on and take the these precious moments with you, the lovely people that have actually escorted you to the airport the moment you walk into harare international airport that is robert mugabe international Air, rg mugabe international airport so uh the moment you walk in okay let's say you're walking in through the de departures on your left side you're going to see that there are guys who are wearing these green vests who are, way, who are weighing uh, bags for people and things like that. If you take a look at that, you're going to notice that you are clever because you've done your weighing of bags earlier on. You're going to see that there could be a lot of chaos of people that are being asked to put some of their things away because they've packed a lot of stuff in their bags. So if you want to go ahead and do the plastic wrap on your bags, you can go ahead and do that with them they do charge a fee and it varies on the uh on some of the negotiations now looking at uh, uh um when you get to the airport you are going to first of all before you say goodbye to your family and friends you need to make sure that you do what is known as check-in okay so check-in is a process of taking your bags that you have and remaining with what I call a hand luggage that you take that you take on your plane. So you're going to be have maybe big bags. So you're taking these big bags to what is known as the cargo. And then you're going to say goodbye to your bags and then you're going to see them when you arrive at uh, your destination. So that's the first goal that you want to make sure you do. However, when you walk into Arara International Airport, you're going to see that there's a lot of people which is a public area. You just say to your friends, guys, I'll be back. Let me just do the check-in. Once I do the check-in, I'm going to come back and say goodbye. So don't spend a lot of time trying to say goodbye at that moment. Go straight into the check-in. There is a security guy who is going to ask you that, are you traveling? Can you show us your passport? Can you show us your um, whatever? Okay, and then you just show them and then you, they're going to point you to your airline. Once you go to your airline, you're carrying your bags and everything that you have, and then they're going to weigh your bags again. And if you have at that point any excess luggage, they're going to charge you for that. And trust me, a lot of people, they acted confused when they go to that point when they didn't weigh their bags, okay? But anyway, you are a clever person because you've actually done that process already. You know that you've taken the bags that are actually allowed. So at that point, what you're just simply going, uh, the process that you're doing there is to tell the flight line that I'm available to take up my flight. And remember, you've actually done this like three hours before, okay? So when you take your bags in, they're going to give you stickers and things like that. At that point, make sure that the bag that you remain with is a bag that is very light and especially it has your, um, it has your particular, uh, uh, your Documents, okay, your personal documents like your ID, your passport, your driver's license, and your important documents. Those I do care with me always. I do care with me always. So once you do that process, they're going to give you what is known as a boarding pass. Now, before you uh, leave that place, they give you the boarding pass. And then with the boarding pass, you can now go through to board your plane. But at that moment, that's when you can actually spend 10 to 20 minutes to say goodbye to the people that have actually escorted you. Because yes, 
in Zimbabwe, a lot of people, they want to have that experience of taking you to the airport and making sure that they uh, say the last words, the last hugs, kisses, and anything in between. You can just take a couple of pictures and things like that. But remember, ultimately, yes, you're saying bye to them, but at the end of the day, they've got a plane to catch. Now, when you say goodbye to your relatives and friends, and then you go to what is known as the uh, uh, check-in point, uh, the boarding point whereby they check your, your t ticket or passport and then they check your boarding pass. And then once you pass through that stage, you're going to go to where is what is known as security checkpoint. Now at the security checkpoint, this is when they're saying that, okay, do you have any harmful stuff? And then you can actually go ahead and check on your air ticket or uh, the travel rules and regulations of what is not allowed and what is allowed at that point. And then at this point, they actually, depending on the airport that you are at, sometimes they make you remove the belt, shoes, your cape, anything that is metal, and then you go through the security checkpoint. Sometimes you also have to remove your wallet and empty your pockets, and then you just put it on the security checkpoint. And then once it's past that, you go to over to the, uh, you, you, you walk pass through uh, a security checkpoint that detects metal or anything that they're actually looking at, and then they scan your bags, and then you are on the other side, then you walk to the other side, and then you pick your things, you take your belt on, and things like that. However, a lot of people at this point, I recommend that when you're traveling, carry shoes that don't have, sh uh, uh, without shoelaces, okay? And don't wear something that is going to have belt, okay? When I travel, I always travel with something that doesn't have a belt, so that I'll avoid that second wave, I have to remove my belt and then take it back on again and then try and tie my shoes. I just wear something that I go with my shoe like fair. I mean my shoe and then I go. Now, talking of um at that point is is uh at that point is where you don't want to make delays at that point. In most cases, in a lot of airports, those security checkpoints they do have long queues. So you want to make sure that you are there on time so that you don't panic. Now, once the security checkpoint is done, you've carried your bags and things like that. I do normally travel with a book uh, when I'm traveling. And at the same time, uh, I pass that. Okay, I pass that. The first thing that I do, I do go and find out which um, boarding gate. Now, boarding gate is where you're supposed to enter into your plane. It will be written on your ticket. Sometimes these changes. You may get to the checkpoint um, through the check-in where you are actually submitting your passport to get your boarding pass. But sometimes they give you a, um, a get point where you're supposed to take your flight and that get point can actually change. Okay, so make sure that you um, go through, after you go through the checkpoint, you find out the get where you're supposed to board your plane. However, when I travel, I always do three things. Now, these three things, I call them confluence. I want to find out three points that are saying the same thing, okay? I do this visually or I do this by asking people. Number one, I do ask the security guy to say, is this way I'm supposed to get a plane, Ethiopian Airways or any other plane to this country? And then they say yes, okay? That's confirmation number one. Confirmation number two, I go and look at the gate and see if it's written Ethiopian Airways to London, okay? When I look at that, I see that this is confirmation number two. I also ask someone who is waiting in the queue or in the line to get on that plane to say, are you also going on this plane to um, Ethiopia? And I say, thank you. And then they say, yes, I've got confirmation number three. I'll give you a very good example. There is a time when I asked just one person and then that person told me to sit. Take a seat. I'll let you know when the gate opens. I had to wait and wait and wait and wait and wait until my time was actually running out. I then realized that this person had given me wrong information. So you need to make sure that you do what is known as confluence. Now, you may be early for your air ticket, which is good. If you have done that, you need to clap hands for yourself. Now, you may be early for your, for, for, for your, for, for your flight. Now, at this point, this is where I take a book. And then I try and read as I wait for the for the flight to uh, uh, to come, and then we are cold, and then we go in. Now talking of a lot of people who have got SIM cards that are of Zimbabwe. So the moment you get on the plane, your SIM card is no longer working. So you need to make sure that each time that you travel, you need to have access to Wi-Fi. 
So there are two things that you can actually do. You can leave your SIM card back at home with someone that you trust and leave your number working, okay? That means you won't be able to make calls, you won't be able to receive WhatsApp because you don't have internet. Sometimes um, some airports, they do give you free Wi-Fi, but what I do, if I need Wi-Fi, if I need to communicate with anyone, I just go to a coffee shop and say, I want to buy coffee. But if I buy coffee, can you please allow me to use your internet they give me their internet and then i do communication now that leads us to a point of communication you know what you don't travel alone there's a lot of people family and friends that are with you virtually thinking if you traveled well or not you need to do them justice by doing them justice is to make sure that you communicate with these people that are helping you on this journey they need to know if you've been on the plane if you have managed to get your ticket if you managed to xyz just keep them what I call real-time communication. However, you may not have real-time communication because you've left your SIM card. So I gave you a tip that if there is no free Wi-Fi at the airport, I go to a coffee shop and then I, I connect to Wi-Fi. I send a message to say, I'm now at this place. Uh, I'm, I'm now at this place. I'm now at this place. I'm now at this place throughout my journey. In most cases, some, uh, most of uh, uh, airports in Africa, they don't give free Wi-Fi, but in the European countries, Yes, you do get free Wi-Fi in uh, some of, so you just go to the Wi-Fi, you find out which one is got uh, free Wi-Fi, and then it's important, very, very important that you um, communicate. Now, moving forward, now you're getting onto the plane, you are on the plane, and you need to make sure that you just follow the rules of the flight attendees, okay? Again, this is going to be your first time experience, make sure you take selfies, ask for permission if uh, it's allowed or not to take selfies in any different places. Take pictures as much as you can. They are important for your memories. And then now you're on the plane and then you're cruising, cruising, cruising. However, in most cases, a lot of flights, they do what is known as connecting flights. Now, connecting flights basically is a one flight taking you from one country to another. And then when they take you from that flight, uh, that country, you're supposed to get on another flight and then you get to another country. So they could be one or two stops or even three stops in different countries however it depends with the situation sometimes you can get on a flight and then they ask you to remain on the flight let me give you a very good example uh when i was flying back to zimbabwe from uh from london i flew to uh from from london to ethiopia and then from ethiopia i went to zambia and then zambia and then um zimbabwe however in ethiopia when we flew from London to Ethiopia, we had to disembark on the flight and then we were given another flight. Okay, we had to get into another flight and then when we got another flight, a place. So now, um, when we went to Zambia, we were not asked to leave the flight actually. Okay, we were said they just told us that remain in the flight, we're just gonna pick up more people here and then you can um, remain on the flight. So that's, those, those are the different experiences that you may have. So you need to find out if you are going to disembark on the plane or if you're going to remain on the plane. However, in some instances, when you are asked to disembark on the plane, you may be asked to get down on the plane and get on at the other side. Some of these airports are very big, very big. So they will help you in moving from one, one, one plane to the other however this is where we call leg time or layover or uh, waiting time or stop period whatever you want to call it I, I i may have said the names wrong but whatever you want to call it so sometimes you can get to a country a good example is that you get on a flight to london and then you are supposed to fly from um harare to johannesburg and then in johannesburg you have to wait for four hours for your next flight to come and then you have to wait for, uh, uh, we go to another country, you wait for like maybe eight hours for the next flight to come. For the first time that are traveling, first time travelers, first time travelers, don't leave the airport, okay? Make sure that you are on the airport uh, all the time and have that experience. However, some experienced travelers, when they know that they've got longer hours, they get out of the airport and then do a little bit of tour in the country and then come back again uh, uh, to the airport and then catch up their flight. But that is very important. That needs to be done by experienced 
travelers. This is why also it's important to use a travel agent who has experience in buying your first time ticket because when they do that, they will buy you or they will book you on a flight where you have little to no time uh, to spend around that airport whereby you'll be just wandering around and things like that. So during that moment when you disembark on the flight, some airports, they are very, very big, like very, very, very big. And some experience that I've actually had when I, while it's traveling is that you get off the flight and then for you to walk to the other connecting flight where you're supposed to board the next flight, it can take you like 30 minutes or even more. Some airports are very, 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 very big. Okay, so you need to take note of that. And some airports as well, they are very, very beautiful. When you get there, you're going to have a very good experience. Some of them, they've got shops. Some of them have got um, uh, restaurants, coffee shops, and things like that. This now leads us to another point whereby that's when you need to carry a little bit of extra money, cash. Okay, you can collect cash or you can actually put the money in your bank account. However, when you're collecting, when you're coming with, when you're uh, traveling with cash, don't you make sure that your money that you're traveling with is clean as possible. When I'm talking about as clean as possible, for those of you who come from Zimbabwe, you know that some of the cash, the US dollars that you use, they're a little bit torn and things like that. If you go to an exchange on uh, on these airports, they may refuse your um, they may refuse your money actually saying that it's not clean. So uh, don't carry. Uh, dirty money okay make sure that it's clean nice it's not torn and things like that another way that you can do is that as you travel you're going to experience that a lot of these outlets may not even accept um, some if not a lot but some of these outlets may not accept cash i've had that experience when uh, i was traveling at this point and then there was a challenge with a flight and we asked to pay cash at that point to say, okay, well, whatever you're going to uh, bill us, we need to pay cash for this. They said, no, we don't take cash. And I had to ask someone else to pay on my behalf and then I give them cash. So you may come across such situations. However, if you are coming from Zimbabwe, a lot of people, they use cash. There are banks like FBC, Bank ABC, Stuart Bank, and the other that offer a visa card or a mastercard before you leave zimbabwe you can also put a little bit of some us dollars in those cards and then you can just swipe around as you travel and when you get your destination as well you can just swipe that money and um voila you're good to go now that you have actually um done a tour of the airport taking selfies and putting on your status and all these other things now you Okay, now say you want to go to the next um, connecting flight. Make sure again that you are there on time. Remember what I said, if you disembark on a plane and you need to go on the connecting flight, look for the people that you've been traveling with, find out where they are going, and remember to have what I call confluence. Let's have at least three things that are saying the same thing. The person that you are sitting next to, ask them, are you going to the same destination with me? Yes follow them yeah okay or maybe if they are some of the people they don't want to be followed if you want to be with them yes you can be with them if they don't want yes give them their space the second thing that you do you can ask a flight attendant where do i get this another person that you can ask is uh security checkpoints security guys you're going to notice them information desks these are all at your disposal and read signs remember have three or more things saying the same thing okay and a lot of people when they get on the waiting periods they relax and sometimes that's when you hear that someone has been left by the plane act crazy you know what get there on time now you've actually you are now getting on your um connecting flight you now getting to um united kingdom there are so many airports here a lot of people who come from zimbabwe most of them, they just know London. Heathrow, okay, Heathrow is actually the most common. So um, just take note that there is a lot of airports. So now when you disembark on um, on Heathrow Airport, what's going to happen is that you're going to take a walk a little bit and then you go to customers, cu customs duty, okay? So when you go to customs or checkpoint where they're supposed to stamp your passport and things like that, they may ask you questions like, where are you going? 
what kind of work are you going to do and you must be ready to answer those questions once that is done they are going to stamp your passport or check your documents or whatever they do and then you walk the next thing that you need to do now is to go and find out where your luggage is remember the luggage that you have actually checked in when you were in zimbabwe that's when you're going to find out um about um uh, uh, that's when you're going to collect that's where you're going to collect your luggage so in some in some instances you may get a ticket whereby you do what is known as self checking self checking basically is whereby each time you stop you're supposed to collect your bags so that's imp important information as well that you want to check when you are um, booking your ticket with the travel agent again in most cases it's less likely to have the self checking so when you leave your bags in Zimbabwe, irrespective that you move from one country to another, stopping there, stopping there, you can just collect your bags from the uh, destination. So the next thing that you want to do is to make sure that you try and find a trolley if you've got heavy bags. You go to where is called, what is called as the collection point. The collection point basically is a place where there is a conveyor belt that is actually uh, moving around and people will be um, looking at their bags and then picking up their bags. However, in some instances, these areas, they are very big and it can be very confusing, but there are some numbers where you can actually go and, um, uh, where you can actually go and know about, um, where you're supposed to pick up your luggage. Again, if you don't know, ask three or four more people. Okay. It's confluence. Remember, confluence. That's what we need. So when, once that is done, and as well, you're doing your communication. If you go to these European countries, most likely internet is free. Make sure you do connect to um, online and then communicate that you have actually uh, arrived and things like that. And then once you collect your bags, you go to what is known as the arrival waiting area. You can just tell them that I made, I made the arrival waiting area and you're waiting to be picked up. If you're waiting to be picked up. And in some instances, this is when you're going to start experiencing that life in the United Kingdom is different from the life in Zimbabwe. When you're traveling in the United Kingdom, when you're going to the airport, you are likely to go alone. But when you're traveling from Zimbabwe to the United Kingdom, you can have these family and friends, uh, you know, saying goodbye to you. But when you get to, again, when you get to the United Kingdom, Hebrew, you may have no one actually waiting for you to pick you up and they would have hired a taxi or paid a bus for you or things like that. That's how you start now to experience the difference um, in cultures, okay? Now, if they have booked a bus for you, it's pretty easy. Just go uh, ask and then go out and then to the bus station. Wait for your bus to come through. Put your bags on the bus. Get on the bus and then uh, communicate that you have actually arrived. If someone is coming to pick you up, just go and find a coffee shop uh, within the airport or sit on the waiting area. Sometimes you may just stand uh, at that point or um, uh, 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 or you can just sit uh, in the waiting area or maybe the person who's picking you up is already there again when you get to Heathrow or any of these airports there's what is known as terminals okay terminals is the terminal that you're actually using to exit or anything in between so you can actually check your ticket as well to communicate with the people that are coming to pick you up that you are at terminal X Y Z I guess this video has been so much paired with information again it's ideal for the first time travelers especially those that are traveling with uh, uh, as healthcare assistance and I uh, hope I've actually helped you with the most key information that you may want to know and I know I may have missed something as well please do leave a comment in the comment section below uh, if you have any question number one if I missed out anything and you want to say I uh, could this is another point as well that you could have shared or this is another point that I experienced and things like that so that we help other people that are traveling for the first time. And lastly, please do one of these three things. Like this video, subscribe to this channel, leave a comment or share this video. When you do that, I do get points from YouTube and please do that for me. Thank you so much for watching and happy flying and all the best. Mm-hmm.